now we will see the first part of the enteric fever in which we will talk about everything about the enteric fever and the second part will be solely about the lab diagnosis of the enteric fever so talking about the causative agent of the enteric fever the enteric fever is caused by salmonella typhi salmonella paratyphi a salmonella paratyphi b and salmonella paratyphi c but this type this this is not the full name of the salmonella okay typhi is not the species name salmonella is genus name and typhi is a serotype name generally we see that any scientific name starts with the genus name and ends with the species name and the first word of any scientific name is the genus name and the second word is the species name but it is not so in case of salmonella then what is the full name of salmonella and what is the species name of salmonella so the full name of is, uh, salmonella typhi is salmonella enterica enterica typhi of which salmonella is the genus name enterica is the species name and again enterica is the subspecies name and typhi is the serotype okay the typhi is the serotype so genus has many species then many species have many subspecies many subspecies has many sero groups and many sero groups has many serotypes so in this way the name classific uh, i mean the name has been given to the salmonella and to simplify this name we generally uh, call salmonella as salmonella typhi by the genus and the serotype name okay to make it more clear because if we call salmonella enterica then there will be many uh, subspecies many serotypes will be there which will be causing infection okay so that will not pinpoint to a particular bacteria but if we say by uh, taking the name of the serotype then we will pinpoint at a particular bacteria how this classification has been done so see here the sero groups uh, has been made on the basis of o antigen while sero groups are further classified into serotypes on the basis of h antigen so sub is after subspecies we have sero groups and those sero groups are based on the o antigen so uh, in case of type e there is a specific n o antigen a specific type n o antigen so due to presence of a specific type and type uh, 9 o antigen it has got a sero group of 9 similarly in paratypy a there is type 2 o antigen there is type 2 o antigen and due to type 2 antigen it has been put into the sero group 2 similarly paratypy b has type 4 o antigen is specific that's why it has been put into sero group 4 paratypy c has a specific type 7 o antigen hence it has been put into sero group 7 okay and all of them has uh, one sero group uh, one uh, o antigen common that is 12 o type 12 o antigen type 12 o antigen is common to all of them type 12 uh, type 12 uh, o antigen is common to all of them and 9 is 9 type 9 o antigen is present only in typhi type 2 o antigen is present only in paratypy a type 4 in only in paratypy b and type 7 o antigen only in paratypy c and hence there has been put into sero group 9 2 4 and 7 respectively so this sero group of uh, different sero types should be remembered like typhi has been taken from the sero group 9 paratypy a has been uh, in sero group 2 paratypy b in sero group 4 and paratypy c in sero group 7 <coughs> okay this should be remembered this is this classification is called as the kaufman white classification okay kaufman white classification is the uh, cl classification on which we have classified this salmonella in sero groups and sero types talking about the antigens of the salmonella so salmonella has got three types of antigen one is o antigen h antigen and vi antigen so what is the difference or what is the points the important points about the o and h antigen the different points are that o antigen is a part of lipopolysaccharide of the cell wall while h antigen is a part of flagella o antigen is less immunogenic h antigen is more immunogenic since it is less immunogenic so it will have less antibody titer while h antigen is more immunogenic so it will have more antibody titer o antibody appears early and hence disappears early but h antibody appears late and hence disappears late when there is a reaction between the o antigen and o antibody there is granular chalky clump formation and when there is reaction between the h antigen and h antibody there is loose fluffy clump formation this is a very important very very important very very important viva question like that uh, the examiner will ask you 
what type of clump is seen if o antigen react with o antibody you have to see granular chalky clump and again he may ask you like what what is the type of clump that is seen when h antigen reacts with h and antibody then you have to say loose fluffy clump okay <coughs> so this were the very important question for the viva what is the pathogenesis of the enteric fever and in pathogenesis we have to first see the risk factor of the enteric fever so risk factor is decreased stomach acidity decreased hcl like if a person is taking excessive amount of proton pump inhibitor for a long duration then there is increased chances to get the typhoid if there is any intestinal uh, integrity has been lost like in inflammatory bowel disease there is suppressed microbiota <coughs> okay in such cases there is increased chances to get the salmonella type a infection now if we talk about the pathogenesis so salmonella enters into the body via the oral route and reaches to the intestine and there uh, the intestinal mucosa has a special type of cell called as the m cell okay these salmonella cause formation of membrane ruffles on the cell membrane of the m cells as a result the bacteria gets internalized in a vacuole the intestine has got four layers <coughs> the mucosa submucosa muscularis layer and the adventitia so the vacuole containing the bacteria reaches to the submucosa where it is phagocytosed by the macrophages but macrophages cannot kill the bacteria why this is because the bacteria makes some changes in the lipopolysaccharide which is present in its cell wall so the macrophages cannot identify the bacteria and hence they cannot kill the bacteria this uh, as a result leads to the primary bacteremia okay this as a result leads to the primary bacteremia the macrophages containing salmonella reaches to the lymphatics and then reaches to the circulation causing primary bacteremia but the bacteria spreads to the uh, reti uh, from the circulation it is spreads to the reticular endothelial tissues and multiplies there okay this is called as the spread spread of the bacteria and from the organs the bacteria again enters into the blood in large amount causing secondary bacteremia and hence there occurs symptoms so symptoms appear only after the secondary bacteremia this is all about the pathogenesis of the salmonella typhi or the enteric fever which is causing the enteric fever now what is the clinical manifestation of the enteric fever so clinical manifestation in clinical manifestations the two most important uh, um, diagnostic features are the step laden pattern of fever that means the fever will rise and again on the alternate day fall then again rise again fall okay like a step ladder we we have seen the step ladder there is a gap then again one stand then again gap then again one uh, step is there so uh, similarly similar to that uh, in this fever what happens there is a rise in fever i mean there is fever then again on the alternate day there will be fall in the temperature again there will be rise in temperature again fall in temperature so similarly step ladder pattern of fever occurs there then there is rose sports these are very famous sports rose sports these are nothing but the macular papular rashes and these are seen in case of the enteric fever <coughs> then anorexia nausea and vomiting can be seen and ataxia psychiatric symptoms which uh, ataxia is also called the muttering delirium so this type of clinical features are seen and headache chills myalgia and arthralgia are the features which are commonly associated with the fever so they will also be seen okay so these are all the clinical manifestations of the salmonella uh, enteric fever now what are the specimens that we collect in case of the salmonella type so in the first week of illness we generally collect the blood for blood culturing in the second and third week of illness the serum specimen is col uh, col collected i mean again the blood is collected for serology and in third and fourth week of illness urine and stool cultures are more sensitive so urine and stool cultures are collected in in the third and fourth week of illness okay 
this is all about the general part of the salmonella typhi now in the second part we will read about the lab diagnosis of the enteric fever